Let's look one of the most fascinating games maybe of last century that was played in a in in Mikhail Tal's uh, style but was played by none less uh, known Gary Kasparov. This game I remember when it was played and after the end of the game for months and maybe for two or three years after that, uh, people were still talking, they, they were still under influence of the performance that Gary Kasparov gave in this game. This may be his one of the most memorable games he has ever played. Game was played against another world's famous uh, grandmaster, Veselin Topolov of Bulgaria. E4, D6, D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6. Very rare for Topalov opening. He chose to play Perk defense. Kasparov was white. He chose to play Perk defense against Kasparov. Bishop E3, Bishop G7, Queen D2, C6, F3, B5. Still opening part. We're not going to uh, pay attention to this too much. Knight G2, E2, Knight B2, D7. Bishop h6, Bishop takes h6, Queen takes h6, Bishop to b7, a3, e5, castle for black, for white, Queen e7, and King b1, a6, Knight c1. Now let's talk about this position. Obviously, black cannot castle king side. And I'm not even sure if they could, they wanted to, because white would launch then a uh, king side attack. So, in this position, black castles long, knight b3, and now black has to come up with some plan, because they have little space disadvantage. So they played e takes d, rook takes d4, and c5 activating the b7 bishop rook to d1 and knight to b6 white played g3 in this position possibly trying to activate bishop on h3 square king to b8 knight to a5 and now it's critical for black not to give up the b7 bishop because if white manages to take this bishop and go bishop g2 followed by f4 and e5 that may be very very critical for black so black obviously wants to maintain this bishop and black played bishop a8 bishop h3 by white and black played here d5 well black wants to equalize game but notice that their king is a little bit open there and does not have enough protection. So queen f4, king a7, rook h2, e1. Now white wants to play ed and open all these pieces and penetrate and take advantage of black's bad king position. d4 is normal for uh, black. And here white has dilemma. They must find a way to break through. Uh, through to the king. So knight d5 is the move. Knight b takes d5, e takes d, and queen to d6. This is an interesting position. Now if black exchanges queens, obviously they have very good game because knight, knight on a5 is not very well placed and uh, black is in really good shape here. However, after queen d6, rook takes d4 is the tactical shot. Now cd is not going to be good here. Well, actually it has to be played because now if white, black plays rook takes f4, then queen takes f4 after rook takes f4, you see that knight on f6 hangs and pawn on f7 hangs too if knight moves. 
So after rook takes d4, cd must be played. And now rook to e7 check. Well, that's the decisive move. That's the key move of the combination. Well, you see that after queen takes, if uh, on rook e7, if black plays queen takes e7, they get checkmated in a few moves. Queen takes d4 check, king b8, queen b6 check, bishop b7, knight c6 check, and a king a8, queen a7 checkmate. Well, obviously they see those simple combinations, and after rook uh, to e7 check, black went king b6, queen takes d4 check, and king takes a5. Now, this position, Kasparov, this combination Kasparov couldn't have possibly calculated all the way through. He just intuitively thought that he has enough initiative and enough uh, compensation and possibly to create a uh, mating net. b4, king a4, and queen c3. Let me tell you something. This game, if we start analyzing every variation possible uh, in this game, we need probably several hours. None, neither Kasparov or, or uh, Topolov analyzed this position all the way through. They did not see everything could have happened. It was most like intuitive. Well, a lot of players would be afraid they can intuitively sacrifice pawn or maybe minor piece for a couple of pawns, but you don't sacrifice a rook and the bishop intuitively. And this was intuitive. Uh, well, this was very unusual and 100% intuitive sacrifice. And after um, b4 check, black played king a4 and queen c3, Black played queen takes d5. It doesn't look like white has forced checkmate. Now black controls the b3 square with the queen. Queen gonna take on b3. So white has several moves. Oh, they have rook a7. That's what was played. And bishop b7 is the only answer for black. Bishop b7, rook takes b7. Here is the quiet position where one side has an extra um, rook. Queen cannot take on b7 because of queen b3 mate, but king on a4 makes this uh, black's position very dangerous. This is absolutely fascinating game. For example, Tal would have gone for this position for white in a blink. Kasparov is more careful player but also as, go as good as Tal in tactics. Maybe even stronger now because, well, it was different era when uh, Ta Tal was already on the, uh, uh, close to the end of his career. Kasparov was just coming up. So Tal, uh, the Kasparov's tactical ability is uncomparable and his intuition is also very well known. So this position, he correctly assumed as winning for white. If you want to see complete analysis of this game, magnificent analysis going for miles and miles longer, well, you can pick up this game in one of the informant publications or all, anywhere online if you um, uh, request the game between Kasparov and Top Topolov played with this opening. You can see it complete. I'm just here to show you what happened in a game and to how can you appreciate the beauty of it and incomparable beauty of it. So in this position, after uh, queen c4, white plays queen takes f6. And king takes a3. Well, there was a threat of king takes a6 checkmate so black has to eliminate the pawn on a3. After king takes a3, queen takes a6 check, king takes b4, and now c3 check. 
king takes c3, obviously not queen takes c3 because queen takes b5 check followed by rook a7 is a checkmate. So king takes c3, king takes c3, queen a1 check, king d2. Not too often you can see king on d2 with uh, all the heavy white pieces, queen and two rooks on the board, and black's king is on d2. So queen b2 check, king d1, and the bishop f1. Another very powerful, beautiful move. Idea of this move, if king is going to take, king takes on f1, then uh, white has decisive checkmate, checkmating combination. Queen, queen c2 check, king e1, and rook e7 checkmate. Almost checkmate, queen e2 yes. what? So in this position, after bishop f1, black makes the only move, rook to d2. White plays rook to d7. Black plays rook takes d7. Bishop takes c4. And now threatening queen e2 checkmate, so black must play b, b takes c4. And queen takes h8. Now this is absolutely fascinating um, continuation, where all this had to be done here, the only defense for black, beautiful attack for white, and in the end capturing rook on completely opposite side of the board. Now uh, white has decisive material advantage, and they win the game in a few moves. Rook d3, and uh, queen a8, c3, queen a4 check, king to e1, f4, and after f5, king to c1. Well, black spawn on c3 is not going anywhere, and after rook d2 and queen a7, black simply resigned. White wants to play queen takes h7 and eliminate all black spawns, and pawn c3 lost its power. Incredibly complicated and very well played and with a great inspiration by um, one of the greatest names in chess history, Gary Kasparov.